Is it possible to beat a Pokemon Scarlet Hardcore Nuzlocke only using full odds shiny Pokemon? Well, of course it is, but it's something I've always wanted to try out. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is my first ever attempt at a Hardcore Nuzlocke using only full odds shiny. Now, I'm gonna skip all the boring mumbo jumbo and get right into our first shiny hunt. I didn't have a specific target in mind, and just ran around the map searching for a Pokemon I'd like to have on my team. I spent some time looking for a silly Cobra, then a little while for Bramblin, and eventually made my way to Mankey. When in doubt, return to Monkey. This outbreak also just so happened to be in the perfect location to perform picnic resets. So I did just that. Now the real beauty of doing this challenge at full odds is the fact that it's gonna take quite some time. Well, about 8 hours of hunting later, oh. and I almost missed it because it blended in with the grass. But we now had our first shiny, which was special for another reason. Alongside the rules of a Nuzlocke, a hardcore Nuzlocke has some additional rules, one being a level cap per badge. And for the first badge, the max level for our Pokemon was 15. Fortunately, this monkey met that criteria. Otherwise, I might have had to spend 8 more hours hunting for another one. Anyways, now it was time to do some battles. But before taking on Katie and her big bean, I did a little prep work. Found an Adamant Mint, an Orin Berry, and the TM's Acrobatics and Brick Break. And with all that, Zeke was looking a bit beefier. And ready to actually take on Katie. She leads off with Nimble, and I lead with Zeke, because... He's my only Pokemon. Two acrobatics and the grasshopper goes down. Katie then sends out Tarantula, which takes an acrobatics, then yoinks Zeke's Orenberry with Bug Bite. I didn't know Bug Bite had that effect, so that's a bit unfortunate. But what isn't unfortunate is that when you no longer have an item, acrobatics does double the damage. One more takes out the yarn ball, and Katie sends out her final Pokemon, which she puts this fancy hat on just for it to die from two acrobatics. And with that, we secure our first badge. Immediately after squishing those bugs, I was in the mood for some crab. So I went and chased this giant one in its own Mojo Dojo Casa House. Cloth decided to protect its own home. So I had Zeke karate chop it in half. Now you could tell I don't do challenge runs like this ever because I didn't terastalize here. Fortunately, it didn't matter because after another brick break, Cloth runs away. But I chase it again because I still want to eat that crab. Cloth takes some performance enhancing drugs and then lets one rip. Maybe I don't want to eat that crab actually. Also, Arvin shows up. So together, we beat up this poor innocent creature. And I again didn't terastalize because I am a rookie. But Cloth just got zooked. So the only thing to do after killing an innocent creature is to invade its home. Arvin makes us a well-deserved sandwich that I feed to my dog. And now Coridon can run faster, which is perfect timing because it's time for... The next badge we're going to attempt is the grass one. So my first thought was to get myself a burb. So I spent about an hour looking for any burb that wanted to be my friend, but none of them did. And then my brain hatched an incredible idea. Instead of a flying type, I could get a Pokemon that would be a great, great asset to the company. for many great, future great badges. So I ate some bean soup and started looking. Now the problem with doing shiny hunts this early in the game is that you only have encounter power 1, so there isn't much of your target spawning usually. So I eventually found myself this Toxel Outbreak, which stays full odds if you don't kill any of them. And I'd like to think, because of my kindness to these little fellas, they rewarded me very quickly. Seriously, I think I was only searching for Toxel for an hour at most. And with this little girl, who I rightfully named Guitar Hero 3, we could take on the world. And by the world, I mean this guy who liked jumping off windmills. Seriously, how did bro not break his legs? He leads with Petalil, and I lead Guitar Hero 3. I hit Petalil with an acid, and then I get put to sleep. After a few turns, Guitar Hero 3 wakes up and uses acid again. Petalil puts me into orange HP, so the berry I gave Toxel gets eaten, restoring some of her health. One more acid, and Petalil goes down. 
Brassius then sends out Smollett, but since Toxel ate that berry, I can now use Belch, which has base 120 power, which okos Smollett. Then Pseudobuda comes out and terrestrializes. Another Belch brings it down to 1 HP, and Guitar Hero 3 takes a Trailblaze. This scares me, so I swap into Zeke to take the next hit, and finish it off with an Acrobatics, securing us our next badge. And before taking on the next Titan, I did a little prep, picking up the TM for Rock Slide, where this happened. Oh my god. Fortunately, there were no casualties, and I made my way to the big burb. I finally remembered I can Terrastalize, and Terra Guitar Hero 3. Three nuzzles take out the burb, and then it has a little snack. Arvin shows up again, and wait, where did you come from? Anyways, we fight the large bird together now. This fight can be a bit scary though. It's the only titan battle you get thrown right into. There's no opportunity to heal before. So Guitar Hero 3 is coming into it, missing some HP. But I Terra Toxel again, and hit Bombardier with a nuzzle. And I also got pretty lucky with this fight, because Bombardier gets parahaxed. I hit a crit, and then it focuses on Arvin's Nackley, which decided to finally attack once the Titan was already on 1 HP. Thanks, Arvin. He then made me a stinky sandwich. Thanks, Arvin. Which we both feed to our dogs. And after, it was time to take on our first Team Star base. But if you don't know, you need three Pokemon in order to fight Team Star. So that means... And right before this hunt, I found Swords Dance. But right next to where I fought the Flying Titan, I set up a picnic, and the game said no. But I've played this game so much that I don't even need a table to make a sandwich. And honestly, it didn't even come out half bad. With this great cheese sandwich, we get Encounter Power 2 for Dragon types. And with it, we head into this cave to hunt a Gibble. Now, I have the option to either run back and forth through this cave, or set up picnics in the center. This hunt took me four days. So I did a lot of both, but eventually... <laughs> With Philip now by our side, we can take on Giacomo. So before entering, I gave Zeke a black belt and Philip some soft sand. I lead with Zeke and Giacomo leaves with Pawniard. I learn from my lesson and immediately terrestrialize Zeke and hit Pawniard with a Terra boosted, four times super effective Brick Break. Some might call this overkill. I call it justice because next Giacomo sends out his car, which lowers Zeke's attack with Intimidate and lowers his special defense with Metal Sound. I hit it with a Brick Break, which does not do nearly as much damage as I was hoping for, and in order to save Zeke's life, I switch into Guitar Hero 3, who tanks a hit. Now, I was praying Guitar Hero 3 was faster, but this is a literal car, so I blew it. Our first death of the challenge, but we don't have time to mourn just yet. I switched back into Zeke and pray for two things. One, that he can survive a hit and two, that a Terra boosted Brick Break will KO now that the stat drop is gone. And we're screwed. I can't risk Philip not being able to tank two hits, so I have to use Zeke as fodder. Zeke's sacrifice will not be in vain though, because I get a clean switch into Gibble, who tanks a hit and kills the stupid car once and for all. Holy crap, I cannot believe we made it out of that fight alive. It was way harder than I was anticipating, and just proves how much of a rookie I am when it comes to challenge runs like this. You know when you're walking and you stub your toe into the side of the couch? It hurts so bad and you think you broke something, but in reality you're totally fine? Well, that's what this felt like. But I will absolutely learn from this, as we lay Zeke and Guitar Hero 3 to rest. Pour one out for them. F's in chat. And now with Philip as our lone survivor, we need to rebuild this team. The next badge is the Electric Gym. And although I'm confident Philip can handle it, I don't want to risk going in unprepared again. So my first stop was at a Chudal Outbreak. And I guess the game didn't think I had suffered enough. Because I was at this hunt for an ungodly amount of time. I spent eight days here. I can't lie, I was close to calling it quits on this challenge right here. But... Oh, finally! 
Welcome our newest team member, Donatello. And to avoid doing more battles, I went and hunted another team member. Toad School and Cruel are some of my favorite new Pokemon and Shinies in Gen 9. So I knew I needed one, and this one was a significantly shorter hunt than the last, taking probably only an hour. Welcome Toadette. And one last thing before continuing. Philip evolved into Gabite, and I taught her Swords Dance, and Donatello into Dreadnought. Now we can keep this party going. Except, before I get to take on the electric gym leader, my good friend Nimona wants the business. And unfortunately for her, I came up with a brand new, groundbreaking strategy for all of my battles. I lead with Philip and set up two swords dances. And then I proceed to sweep her entire team with my dragon. As for the gym leader, I do the exact same thing. Terastalize, set up swords dances, murder. This strat is foolproof, and nothing bad will ever happen to Philip, right? Well, let's see, because next I was venturing back into a Team Star base. Mela leads with Torkoal, and I lead with the Goat. First, I set up a Sandstorm, because Philip's ability is Sand Veil, and I was hoping to avoid some attacks while I Swords Dance, which I did twice, before Torkoal hits me with a clear smog. Womp womp. So, next turn I used Bulldoze. And Philip gets burned. When a Pokemon is burned, their physical attacks do about half as much damage. So, once again, the Team Starbase has put us into a tricky situation. But I've grown and learned. So, I switch into Donatello and Terastalize, finishing off Torkoal with a Terra Boosted Razor Shell. And now, it is once again Kara Clock. It hits me with an Overheat, which does barely anything, and lowers its special attack. Meaning, this battle is all but one for us. Two Razor Shells, and it's over. So, maybe the Philip Swords Dance strat isn't perfect, but we improvised and still made it out unscathed. It was at this point I was starting to get a little overconfident, and that was about to bite me. I rushed over to our next badge, the Steel Titan Orthworm. Once again, led with Philip, and used Swords Dance. Headbutt did more damage than I would have liked, so instead of setting up any longer, I attempted to just attack the worm. Little did I know, Orthworm has the ability Earth Eater. So ground moves can't damage it. And then it used Wrap on Philip. So I couldn't switch. The only way to possibly salvage this was to Terra Dragon and hope Dragon Claw did enough. I blew it once again. I got my goat killed. It's so unfortunate because I had the TM for Fire Fang. I could have just gave it to Philip and still won this battle easily, but I got too cocky. Anyways, I switched into Donatello and got revenge for Philip with three Razor Shells. I also didn't realize how lucky I got here. Orthworm only used Headbutt and Wrap on Donatello, who is weak to steel. I could have very easily lost the challenge right here. But before we take on the second phase, we must part ways with Philip. Rip in peace, Philip. Anyways, on to phase two. This time, I terrestrialized Donatello, and Orthworm actually used Iron Tail, which is now not very effective. A couple razor shells and grass knots from Arvin, and Wormy goes down. All in all, not too shabby. Arvin makes us another sandwich, which we feed to our dogs. And now it's time for us to once again rebuild this team. My first target can be found in the same area. I was looking for the blue balls. Voltorb is fast, has a good shiny, and will help us out a ton with some of the upcoming badges. The game once again did not care that I was mourning the loss of a friend though, because Voltorb took its sweet, sweet time showing up. <gasps> oh, oh. But now we had Bartholomew, but not quite as long as my next hunt, Metatite. I've never used a Metatite before. I think part of the fun of a challenge like this is getting to use a bunch of new Pokemon you never have before, and seeing a bunch of new shinies. I was at this hunt for a long time though. Supposedly you can have an isolated encounter for Metatite in this cave with an encounter psychic sandwich. But unluckily for me, I only had access to a fighting sandwich. 
So there was also a bunch of Makohitas. I spent the next three days searching for the onion head with no luck. I started to get very paranoid about phasing and eventually found myself a Metatite outbreak so I didn't have to worry. And after many, many more hours. Oh, yes. Yes, finally. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. And I gave Metatite the most fitting name I could think of. We now had a larger team than ever before. Four Shiny. <laughs> Which might have caused a little curse. I'm sure that's not something to worry about too much. So I went to the next gym. And the leader ran away. Blood is probably scared of my team. Because before showing up, I got the TM for Giga Drain, and Thunderbolt, and Evolved Bartholomew, and Toadette. Kofu eventually came back and agreed to battle me. He leads with Veluza, and I led with Bartholomew, which I immediately terrestrialize and use a boosted Thunderbolt. Kofu sends out Wugtrio next, which also takes a Thunderbolt to its many faces. Kofu's last Pokemon is Crabominal, which terrestrializes before it takes a Chunderbolt. Somehow, it lived, and hit Bartholomew back with a crab hammer. It crit, bro! Oh my god. Bartholomew did leave Crabominal with a parting gift of static, though. So, I sent in Toadette to finish the job. And with that, we got our next badge. Even with the very unfortunate casualty. Before taking on the next badge, I had to travel across the land, searching far and wide for Earth Power. Because the next badge is the Poison Badge. And as you may know, I haven't had the best of times with these Team Star bases. So I gave Donatello a Shell Bell and Toadette some Soft Sand. Now we take on the boss, Atticus. I started with Onion Breath, who uses Workup and avoids a Sucker Punch from Skunk Tank. Then I hit the Skunk with a Force Palm, after getting hit with a Toxic. It crits, but doesn't kill. To avoid Skunk Tank Sucker Punch or Venoshock, I swap in Toadette, which takes a Venoshock and then a Sucker Punch, before knocking out the Skunk Tank with Earth Power. I send Onion Breath back in as Atticus brings out Muk, who goes down to two Zen Headbutts. Then I bring Toadette back out to Earth Power Atticus's Reverum, which Okos. And then it was time for his car. I didn't want to risk Toadette's life, so I swap into Donatello, who takes a noxious torque, then terror razor shells until the car breaks down. It was a close fight, but we made it out, securing our 10th badge. And it was once again time to catch another shiny. In this same area, there is a Pokemon with an extremely useful type combination. The Blue Goblin Impidimp. I've had a really hard time finding this shiny before, on my Violet save file, and not at full odds. So I was a bit worried for this hunt, but I knew with a little hard work and determination, anything is possible. <gasps> no way, no way. Seriously though, this was probably the fastest I've ever been able to find this shiny, only taking about two hours. And since he's gonna become a big goblin, I named him after the biggest, baddest goblin I know. Now it was time to take on everyone's favorite gym leader, Larry. But first I evolved General Grardor into Morgrim, and changed around his moveset. As for the battle, Larry leads with Komala, and I lead Onion Breath. Komala uses Yawn, and then gets smacked with Force Palm, which does good damage. Larry does some good damage back with Slam, which I do not enjoy. But one more Force Palm takes out Komala. With Onion Breath now sleeping, I send out Donatello, and Larry brings out Doodoo Sparse, which gets hit with two Razor Shells but also hurts Donatello and paralyzes her. So I swap into Toadette, who avoids the next attack, then finishes off Doodoo -Doo Head with an Earth Power. But Larry's last Pokemon is the scariest of them all. Staraptor hits Toadette with a very scary Aerial Ace, but gets hit with a Stun Sport. I swap back into Donatello, and Staraptor gets Parahaxed. I wanted to use Rock Tomb here, but I kind of forgot that Terra Normal Staraptor is no longer weak to Rock. So I use Razor Shell instead, while the burb does big damage with Facade. I once again am my own worst enemy because Facade does double damage if the user is paralyzed. Donatello though is my goat. 
because she decided to just stop being paralyzed here. So I prayed that with a defense drop from Razor Shell, a Terra boosted Razor Shell would kill. It did not. And unfortunately, my luck had run out. Star Raptor did not get parahaxed again. I once again got my goat killed. But I sent Toadette back in to finish off the murderer with an Earth Power. Why, Larry? Why would you do this to me? And right after that badge, we're forced into another battle with Nimona, which heals our team. So we're just gonna pretend that the zombie Donatello isn't actually back to life. And I probably should have lost another team member during this fight, but Toadette held on. Oh! Thank goodness. Oh my god. Because I could not handle another death Don't right now. Don't scoop the top! Don't let the go! So we're just gonna pretend like I didn't almost lose the run. And that battle made Onion Breath get some cool pants. But now we must officially lay Donatello to rest. Donatello, you were one of my best. I'm sorry I let you down. When will the casualties stop? Right now. I decided right here, right now, I'm not going to let a single member of my team die ever again. But first, I needed to catch some more shinies. And in order to replace the bulkiness of Donatello, I went with another rock type that has great defense. And luckily, I didn't have to search for too long. Oh, wait a second. Wait a dang second. Welcome, Steve. But in order to avoid the curse of four, I needed to hunt one more team member. And there just so happened to be a Rotom outbreak occurring. So why not? Rotom is a cool Pokemon and all its form changes can come in handy. This outbreak also just so happened to be in a great location, right next to Port Maranata. I could run over here to despawn all the Rotom and then run back to respawn them. And with this tactic, Rotom only took me a few days to find. <gasps> Yes, finally! And I gave it the name Mystery, because it's a mystery which form I'll be using. With five Pokemon on the team, hopefully the Curse of Four is gone for good. And we could test it out with our next badge attempt. After getting the Rotom Catalog, turning Mystery into a Lawnmower, evolving Steve, twice, evolving General Grardor, getting some fancy new items, and changing around some moves, it was time to take on Rhyme in a double battle. She starts off with Mimikyu and Bayonet, and I lead with General Grador and Steve. My Pokemon take some chip damage, then Oko Bayonet, and knock out Mimikyu's disguise. Rhyme sends out Houndstone. I swap Steve for Toadette, and hit Houndstone with a Sucker Punch, which also Okos. She then brings out Toxtricity, so I swap for Mystery, and use Spore on Toxtricity. My Pokemon takes some more damage, which is a little scary, but I put Mimikyu to sleep as well, so it's less scary. And then I just bombard Rhyme's Pokemon with Hex. And with that, we take home the Ghost Badge. Next was the fourth Titan Pokemon, and it may have been the easiest badge of the entire run so far. I led with Toadette and used a Terra boosted Giga Drain to one shot it. And for phase two, I did the exact same thing, but this time it took two Giga Drains. The Titan Pokemon might be on Fraud Watch, because this was way too easy. But after a successful badge claim, me and Arvin feed our pups, and now mine can glide. After, I went to the Psychic Gym, where Nimona wanted to fight again. This time I have a Pokemon that can resist her Quackle Ball's Aqua Step, and take it out with a Leaf Storm. Now for the actual gym leader, Tulip. Possibly my favorite gym leader in the entire region, for reasons. I lead with Grimmsnarl, and she leads with Farigarath. I use Bulk Up three times to increase Grimmsnarl's attack and defense, while Tulip crunches on me a few times. But then I murder the Giraffe with a False Surrender. Her next Pokemon is Gardevoir, which is a little scary because although General Grardar is a fairy himself, he is also weak to fairies. So I Terrastalize him to lose that weakness. Unfortunately, Gardevoir's Dazzling Gleam still does more than I'm comfortable with, but I take it out with a false surrender. Next is Herospartha. So I bring out Toadette, who tanks a Psychic, and puts the Ostrich to sleep. I use Giga Drain to get some HP back, then finish it with a Hex. And for her last Pokemon, Toadette is so goaded she dodges a Moonblast, 
N puts Florgus to bed. N then uses Hex a couple times to secure the win. Not to get too ahead of myself here, but we're kinda cooking. And to keep the streak going, I went straight to the Ice Gym to take on Grusha. Who leads with a Frostmoth, and I lead with Steve. Frostmoth sets up a Tailwind, which makes all of Grusha's Pokemon outspeed me, but I murder his Moth with some rocks. Then I sent out Onion Breath to take on Bear Tick. I use a Bulk Up and take too much damage from Icicle Crash. I then make a really, really dumb play and don't swap. But I get bailed out by this oh game's God, friendship crit. mechanics once again because Onion Breath survives on 1 HP from a crit, and then Oko's Bear Tick with a Drain Punch. With Onion Breath's new lease on life, I stay in, take an Ice Spinner from Satitan, and Oko with Drain Punch. Then Grusha sends out Altaria. Altaria will murder Onion Breath. So I swap into Steve, and I hit it with a Terra Boosted Rock Slide which brings it down to basically 1 HP. Steve tanks an Ice Beam and finishes the fight with a Heavy Slam. Like I said, we're cooking. The Curse of Four was definitely real, and once it was broken, we haven't lost a single team member. But before I can continue with the gauntlet of battles ahead of me, I needed to find my final team member. One that'll help me with the next badge, because the Fairy type is probably the one I struggle against the most. So I decided to catch a Poison type. One I've never used before, and this was the fastest hunt I had this entire run. Uh, are we joking right now? Are we joking right now? I've been, I've been here for 30 seconds. Okay. Full odds, by the way. Now, back to the gauntlet. And back to my least favorite battles, Team Star. Now, the issue with my newest team member is that it's also a dragon type, which is weak to fairy. But as soon as the battle starts, I terrestrialize to lose that weakness, and Oko Azumarill with a sludge bomb. Next is Wigglytuff, which body slams Kelpo and paralyzes him, but sludge bomb still hits and kills. Ortega's third Pokemon is Dash Bun, which uses crunch and hurts, but then gets Oko'd by sludge bomb. And the final Pokemon, of course, is the dumb car. So I swap into Mystery, who is now an oven, and get the car pretty low. I then play some musical chairs, and eventually take the car out with Toadette. This battle got a little hairy at the end there, but again, we got our badge with no deaths. Up next was another Titan on Fraud Watch. Toadette is just a Titan Slayer. She Terra Giga Drains twice and kills Don Bozo's first phase and rinse and repeat for phase two. But this Titan has a third phase. And for that one, I send out General Grador to murder with Play Rough. Now it was time for us to get our final badge of the challenge. I switch Mystery into a fan and get in there. Eerie leads with Toxicroak and I lead Onion Breath. I use a bulk up and Trailblaze to increase Onion Breath's attack, defense, and speed, and then use Zen Headbutt. Unfortunately, Eerie's next Pokemon is Annihilate, so I have to swap to General Grador. Remember when we had a Mankey? Good times. I Terra Fairy so Close Combat doesn't murder me, and use Play Rough. Her next Pokemon is Passimian, who also Close Combat's Grim Snarl. I make a very risky play and bulk up and then Play Rough. Fortunately, luck was on my side because General Grador doesn't die, but I miss the Play Rough. So Mystery comes in, takes a close combat, and kills with Air Slash. She then sends out Lucario, who dies to two Earth Powers. And for the final time, we have to fight a literal car. It hits Toadette with a Combat Torque, which hurts a lot. And I try to use Spore, which for some reason doesn't work. So now I have to swap into Kelpo, which gets hit with a Combat Torque, and gets paralyzed. But it doesn't matter because I only brought Kelpo in to make the dumb AI use high horsepower, so I could get a clean switch into Mystery, which works like a charm, and three air slashes wins us the fight. And with that, we have now obtained all 18 badges. And it was time for us to take on the final few challenges. Starting off with Rika, which Toadette basically swept her entire team. Then we had to fight a literal child, who I used Onion Breath to bulk up and trailblaze like before, and then swept her entire team. Easy. 
The third member of the Elite Four is our old pal, Lawrence. Lawrence is the last battle that killed one of my Pokemon. So I was excited to get my revenge here. I knocked out his first four Pokemon with no problem. But I made a grave mistake when it came to his Flamigo. I once again let Lawrence get the best of me. I am so sad. Toadette was with us for so long. I sold. And honestly, I only got out of this battle with one death because the friendship mechanic once again saved me. But oh my god, I hate Larry. And for the final member of the Elite Four, I once again threw on their last Pokemon. My two most senior team members gone in the blink of an eye. But we can't focus on that because it was time to take on the champion with only four Pokemon left. Here's how it went. I lead off with Mystery, who once again is an oven. Her ostrich outspeeds me and hits me with a Luminia Crash, which of course crits. I have Mystery set up a sub and then hit Espartha with two Shadow Balls. Next, she sends out Avalug. So I stay in with Mystery and Overheat, Okoing. Her next Pokemon, King Gambit, is where we run into some issues. I bring out Steve, who's able to tank an Iron Head and attack back, but he flinched. So now I'm in a pretty tricky situation. I swap into Kelpo to tank the next Iron Head, but quickly realize I don't have a good play here. I sack Kelpo to get a clean switch back to Mystery and finally kill this stupid chess piece with an overheat. She sends out Veluza and I switch into General Grardor, which Oko's with a sucker punch. Then she brings out her Go-Go, so I go back to Mystery and use Overheat again. Her final Pokemon is her ace, Glamora. I do not have a good way to kill this thing since I sacked Kelpo. I decided to stay in with Mystery and set up a sub, but Sludge Wave takes me down really low. And since I didn't swap, Mystery already has a minus two special attack. So I kinda threw again. I use Overheat and that's unfortunate. Now my only play is to use Mystery as fodder for a clean switch into Steve. So I do that and then Steve dies. General Grodar is our last hope, so I use Sucker Punch, which doesn't do nearly enough. And then I'm hit with a super effective Sludge Wave. Really, really unfortunate. I made a lot of misplays in that last battle, and I definitely could have won it. This was not supposed to be how it goes. But look, at the end of the day, I've never claimed to be good at these games. I mean, it's only my job or something. But I'm a shiny hunter not a Nuzlocker. So, although I'm sad to have not completed the run, I'm proud of myself for even making it this far. And I appreciate any of you that made it this far too. This is obviously not like a normal upload from me. So, if you liked the video, I would really appreciate you liking and subscribing. Doing full odds hunts made this take so much longer than I wanted it to. But that's all I have for you guys today. If you want to see me attempt more challenge runs, and actually win them, let me know. Okay, bye-bye.